Oh, looking at it from here, it is. It looks pretty good. For over 20 years, I've wanted to build my Dream 318 John Deere garden tractor, but I could never commit the time to getting it done. So 130 days ago, I challenged myself. I decided to finally start my project, but the catch was that I had to work on it every day until it was done. Some days I got a lot completed and some days hardly anything, but I stayed engaged and honored the commitment I had made to myself. I've documented everything along the way and shared it with all of you and well, Today is the last installment of this series and I'm going to show you the results. Plus, I'm going to finally reveal the tractor's new name with a special story about how I decided on it. So I hope you stick around to join me. Dig drive, DIY. It's day 112. I just released a video today called A Little Bit Goes a Long Way. And I had a lot of folks give me some good advice on what to do on my paint. Uh, they think I needed to thin it down and I agree. So I've got some reducer, I've got some hardener for the paint. I got a different gun. So we're gonna change a lot of variables at once, which is not the way to do a scientific experiment to figure out what was wrong to begin with, but we're just gonna throw everything at it and see if we can have a little bit better luck this time than we did the last time. I'm gonna get some paint mixed up, ready to go. And then hopefully with any luck, we'll get these panels shot today. Reducer. This is reducer. Okay, that is way better than it was. So something helped. I'm gonna paint some of these wheel weights. And start over here. I'm actually kind of excited. So I'm gonna mix up some more paint and get to work. Well, it's not going too bad. There might be a little bit more orange peel than what I wanted. I don't know for sure, but it's going on there regardless. I'm just gonna keep painting. I'll show you when I'm done. Well, well, well. It is certainly not perfect. There's some runs here and there. I got carried away. The weights all look good. The hood looks pretty decent. The grill looks really good. It doesn't look too bad. It's good enough for a garden tractor. It's day 113 and it's time to see what they look like in the sunlight. Without further ado. Definitely shiny, but the texture is not good. Like this run filled in that crack. So what do you do about that? See how bad that orange peel is? That's really bad. Well, depending on what I do, whether I reshoot them or I try to wet sand some of the orange peel out, I'm not gonna be able to do it in here. So I'll get everything moved over to the shop and then maybe I'll work on it over there. Well, day 114 was actually yesterday. It was a rainy day and I took advantage of that and went to check on my custom made decals that I'm having done for the hood of this Dream Garden Tractor build. It was awesome to see the mock-up of what those are gonna look like. I made a few little customization tweaks to it that I think will really be neat. That is coming down the road here. Today is day 115. And we have been working hard around here on lots of different projects, not just the tractor. We've been working in the house, repainting the upstairs bedroom and our bathroom. We got new carpet. So the shop has taken some real abuse in that I've used it really, really hard and not cleaned anything up for several weeks. So I'm gonna take advantage of a wellness night tonight and use day 115 to get things cleaned up so that we can better serve the tractor in the days to come. So let's get this whole mess cleaned up. Well, it has been about six days since I put the paint on all the panels. While it is shiny, I'm not quite happy with it. And this last video, the comment section taught me something. I had people that were really upset with me that I put a dirty battery and a dirty gas tank in the tractor when I put those back in. So I spent day 116, I cleaned up the battery, washed it all up, scrubbed it, dried it off with a towel, put it back in, then I 
took out the gas tank again, scrubbed it all up, cleaned it off, put it back in the chassis. And I wanted to make sure that those looked good. And, and rightfully so, those should have been cleaned up. So on day 17, I looked into another issue and that was the little seam on the front of the hood. Some of the crack on that seam filled in with paint and it looked like a one solid piece. And in other areas, the paint didn't fill the crack. So it looked inconsistent, which was really bothering me. And I, I tried a trick. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I put caulk in the seam and it, it looks really good right now, but I gotta put some paint on top of that and hopefully that'll look okay. So that was day 117, which brings us to today, day 118. And I've got some runs in this paint. Also, the surface is really orange peely, so I hope to wet sand it and get it polished all out and smooth that paint out. But I also wanna try something I watched on YouTube, a trick to try to take care of runs. And that's to use a razor blade to scrape the run down, then we'll wet sand it out once it's flattened out. So, okay, they say to do this razor blade trick. You're supposed to soften the edges up so they're not nearly as sharp and they don't gouge your paint. Edges aren't sharp at all. Basically the run is right here. It's higher than the rest of the paint and you're supposed to take this razor blade and just start scraping down the run like that. Try not to hit the paint a lot of other places, but you scrape that down and then when you sand the rest of it down, that'll be closer to level. See the extra paint there? I got that run scraped off pretty much, mostly all gone with a razor blade. Now I'm gonna wet sand this with a little 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper. You can just get the sandpaper wet and I'm gonna put some water on here and I'm gonna sand everything and that'll kind of flatten out that orange peel look that it's got. You gotta watch getting cl too close to the corners because that's where you'll take the paint off. Right, that is all blocked off pretty good with the 600. And now I've got some 1500. This is so fine that you can barely tell that it's sandpaper, but this will take out the scratches of that 600. Now remember, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I know has worked for me in the past. You can see where those shiny spots are down by the bottom. So the shiny spots are the low spots that I didn't get sanded. And then the rest of it is where it got sanded down and leveled out. And you can see how it looks level here. Right here's where that run was. And it's not perfect. I can feel it, but it, it's barely noticeable. I think this is gonna shape up fine. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna do the same thing to all the panels to level them up. It is day 119 and I've done a little wet sanding and I've rinsed this off, it's all dry. I'm gonna use a little polishing compound that I've had a long time to see what it does. That's not looking too bad, it's pretty shiny. Can you see those scratches in there? All right, well, I think I've got a little bit more work ahead of me and I'm gonna spare you guys the hassle of having to watch all this because you just want to see the results, right? Day 120, I'm trying to get a few runs out of these rims. I have to repaint them anyway because when, the, when I put the rims on or when I put the tires on, it's probably gonna booger up the rims. I basically had to take a razor blade and go right through them. So I'm gonna hit these with some sandpaper, get them smoothed up, and then I'll paint them up with a spray can. The majority of them are, the paint's okay, but I think I'm gonna have to touch them up after I put the tire on anyway. It's day 121 and it's finally time to do something I've been waiting to do for a very long time. I have owned these tires for over 10 or 12 years. I bought them thinking I'd mount them up for my dream garden tractor a long time ago and they've been hiding out ever since. So I'm gonna get them cleaned up and then I'm gonna try to get the rims mounted. And once that's done, I'll do a final coat of paint on the rims. Let's hope this goes better than I expect it to. A lot of times you don't have to lube up the bead to put it on the back side. Since I'm trying to exert a little bit more care, I am gonna lube up the back side a little bit. Just a little bit. Normally you don't have to do much to do the bottom. There. Okay. With that side on, you gotta put the tube in. So I may have been able to get away without using tubes. Tires may have held air. I don't know. I've had a lot of tires where I thought they would hold air and then they don't without tubes. So my experience has taught me just play the safe bet 
and run the tubes and call it a day. All right, now to see if I can get the top bead on. I'm using the soap because I think it'd be more forgiving when I go to try to paint this too than WD-40. All right, I got the valve stem pulled up out of there from the tube and I inflated it just enough to hold the stem up out of there. I'm gonna sand that edge down and sand up a few nicks where I hit it with the tire iron and then I'll mask that off before I seat the bead. I want so badly to inflate them to see how they're gonna look, you know, to fill them out, but I wanna do my touch up paint first around the edge and make it easy to mask and then we'll blow them up. It's day 122 and tonight has been a ton of paint preparation work. I wanna get the rims painted on both the front and rear wheel. I did scuff them down, get them all roughed up. I tried to get rid of all the loose paint. And then I used a trick that I've seen online a lot of times where you take some old playing cards, thanks mom and dad for the old cards, but you line the outside of the rim between the rim and the bead of the tire. And it's way easier than trying to get tape to stick to the rubber and trying to get tape down in that crack. But you put those cards around there. I'm gonna paint the rear wheels and I've also prepped the front wheels. Now, with the front wheels, I haven't got the beads seated on the rims yet, so I was able to just take part of a garbage bag, stretch it over the rim, and kind of tuck it down between the rim and the tire, and that makes it a nice way to quickly mask those off. So now I'm just to the point where I'm ready to paint. It's gonna be kind of a long process because I plan to do lots of light coats. All right, I got about three good coats on all the rims and the center caps for the front wheels. I gotta tell you, this can of paint is from 2015 and it worked like I just bought it. You pay a little bit more for this John Deere paint, but I really do feel it's, it's really good quality. It sprays really nice, lays down nice. This stuff here looks fantastic. I got a better job out of this than I did the spray guns. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I can't wait to pull all the tape and masking off. It's day one, two, three. And these are two more of the components that make this my dream garden tractor. Two more factory options that I think are really cool. I gotta get them painted. Aha, uh -huh, I found a little problem. These don't fit the spindle. I don't know why I haven't checked them in the two months that I've owned them, but I never did. These are metric and these are the one inchers. So now I got a little problem solving to do and a little more, I thought I was going to get these tires mounted up. I guess you're going to have days like that where you think you're going to accomplish something and uh, well, you're mistaken. <laughs> it's day 125. I'm going to see if I can touch up this little patch job I did on the the seam and the hood. I'm gonna just use a fine little brush and try to put a little color on there. All right, back at doing something. It's day 126. This thing is shiny and it would have been really good had it not orange peeled up so bad. And I have a few sags to try to correct in this. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit with my razor blade trick. Then we'll wet sand this out. The spindle bearing is not fitting the spindle. My biggest mistake was that I never checked that earlier on. I never made sure the bearings were gonna fit until I'd already painted the rims and mounted them up. So the first thing I did was I took this one inch spindles off of this tractor and that way I could kind of figure out how it all worked. And then fortunately I have a parts tractor up in the upstairs of my barn. So I went up there and got that tractor situated, took the front spindles off of that. Then I came back here, cleaned them up, got them all mounted up. It really wasn't too bad of a switch, but it was time consuming. And then I installed the bearings in the new rims. And now it's the moment of truth. I'm ready to see if these rims will fit on these spindles. Make sure I don't have any clearance issues because I want to point out, I did have a few viewers talk to me about trying to put these 420, 430 rims on a 318 and they said they had clearance issues and they had to grind stuff. Well, I thought since I had the right bearings and the right pieces, I wasn't going to run into that and I'm hoping that's still the case. There it is. Ah, that looks so mean on there. That looks awesome. That's what it'll look like. What do you think? Well, that's been a long two days of kind of disappointment and realization that, you know, I could have figured stuff out earlier, but look at that. That makes it all worth it. Well, it's day 129 
earlier, I painted up some weights that I got that were green. I know they have yellow weights that you can buy, but you had to buy them in a set of eight and I really only wanted four, so I bought four and a can of paint. Now for tonight, I've decided to torture myself a little bit and finally get to the wet sanding to try to smooth out some of this orange peel. Hopefully, I don't ruin it and it looks okay when I'm done. I've been dreading this, it's time to get to work. Gonna need some water, sandpaper, spray bottle. Okay. Started now. Well, it is day 130 and I think today is the day. I've set this as the deadline for myself to get this project finished. This was a winter project that's now bleeding well into springtime and we just it's time to move on. So it's been 130 days in a row and I already started early this morning by I bought a new cordless polisher so that I could work on polishing up this metal. Well first of all I did a lot of wet sanding You'll see bits and pieces of it right now of me wet sanding and trying to prep these body panels. I was trying to reduce the amount of orange peel that you can see. Basically, orange peel means that the surface of the paint looks like the surface of an orange. It's kind of bumpy up and down and it's really irregular. So by wet sanding it, you're trying to cut down those high spots and smooth it all out and level it so that everything is at the same level and therefore the paint finish will look smooth and even. I took it down about half or three quarters of the way. I'm afraid if I try to get it completely smooth, I'll burn through the paint and then I'll be really far behind. So I'm gonna call that good enough. I'm just gonna polish it out the way it is. These low spots will blend together and it'll, it'll have a little bit of a texture to the surface. It's not gonna be glass, but it is just a garden tractor. So I spent the whole morning sanding and polishing one of the side panels fell off and landed on the floor, finished paint side down. But I'm finally to the point where it's time to begin reassembly. As I put the panels on, I'm gonna do the last polish and clean, but that's where we're at. So let's get this thing put together. So this is another one of those components that makes this my dream 318 because this is a deluxe seat suspension and I'd always wanted one. I bought a tractor that had it just never got it put on any of my tractors. Going on the Dream 318, so. I forgot that I'd take them off a long time ago. That was for Bill. Easy, easy, easy. Down. Down. I think it's gonna go down quite a bit. Like that? Yeah, like that. Okay, these are gonna go on here like this. That'll look better. There, done. Time for a little tail light action. I think this will be a lot easier to do without the wheels on there. These are the hokiest, hokiest way to hold these in that I've ever seen. It's got these little fragile nuts on the back that go on these plastic studs. It's like a push-in style bulb. That's it. So this is one of the most custom aspects of this build, and this is the, the hood decals. And it was really important to me that they, they were exact replica of the factory decals. So I had the guys over at Clover Printing hook me up. They completely replicated the factory decals, gave me three different color choices, and I think they're gonna look awesome on there. Time to get him back on his feet. I'm trying to adjust the hood, and it's kind of a pain all this fine tuning to get everything lined up nice. Time for some headlight action. I'm re recruiting all the people here for late at night to try to meet deadline. We're not gonna make deadline, it's gonna be dark out there, but uh, I'm not gonna quit now. Wow, 
that's, that's cool, man. Okay, one more custom element. Okay. Never exerted so much care with the side panel as I am right now. Time to make it heavy. So I got one weight in there already. You can kind of guide those bolts through the holes there. Got weights on the rear, we need weights on the front. This is another one of those Dream 318 items. The front weight bracket was an option, and I also thought they looked cool, so I wanna put one on my Dream Machine. I think this is the last piece to complete the Dream 318. So this is significant. Just in time for the fridge to quit running. Okay, we ready for the final piece? So as we wrap up this build, it's time to talk about a name for the tractor. As mentioned in a previous video, many of you viewers provided terrific suggestions, but there was one name mentioned a couple of times that really stood out to me. A name that fits this situation perfectly in multiple ways. So on day 128, I went to visit a special neighbor to help me explain it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm here with Ruth Schaefer and your husband, Don, and yeah. my mom were cousins, right? Well, yeah, they would be cousins. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, they would be cousins. So you guys farmed for how many years? 30 years, maybe more, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> really, how much yeah. were you farming at one time, do you know? Like We got up to 3,000 at one time, really? but then we backed off because it was too much. Yeah, that's uh, a lot to do. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> especially with just three people. Well, I remember as a kid, I was a little kid in the early 80s, and I can remember your equipment because <laughs> It was the biggest around. Yeah. Your, your stuff was the biggest. Yeah, because we was we was the biggest farmers around yeah. here at that time. So how how would you describe Donald? A uh, self-made man. Self-made man. Uh, because we got married when he was 17, and he had nothing to start with. And then he went to school for tool and die making, and he learned from that. And then he decided he didn't want to do that anywhere, so then he got into the Firestone business and and farming. He always had farming too. So mm -hmm. it was good together. Yeah. One thing I remember, we got a bunch of snow one year and it was, it was enough snow that we couldn't go anywhere in, in cars. Mm -hmm. We were out riding snowmobiles around, checking on everyone to see how they were doing. Mm -hmm. So I rode with mom and dad over to Aunt Susie's, which is just down the road from here. Right. So we were there at, at Ronnie and Susie's for a bit, hanging out and seeing if they needed any groceries or anything. And we heard a heck of a roar coming down the road. <laughs> and we saw, I could see in the distance, it was just like snowy covered lights. Like you could just, poof, you hear this noise, like, poof. Yeah. Thought, and I was probably eight or nine years old. And I thought, what in the world is that coming? <laughs> and he come up there right in front of Ronnie and Susie's. And it was Donald uh -huh. in this enormous four wheel drive tractor yeah. with a V blade on the front. Yeah. And he stopped and we got out because he saw us. We were hanging outside at this point. He says, come on, come on, Jack. Come on up here, Jack. So he's waving my dad and me up in the tractor. And I got to ride in that tractor. Oh, did you? When I was probably, I don't know how old I was, early 80s. Yeah. And we, he took off down the road in that tractor and the snow was just off the blade. And I can remember riding in there just thinking, we are either, how could he, I couldn't tell how he knew where the road was, you know, that was drifted that bad. And I think he was, he was throwing her up a little bit more for us too, you oh, know, at the probably time. probably showing but, off. <laughs> but he I'm telling you. did every once in a while. <laughs> if you want to leave an impression on an eight-year-old kid, you put him in a big John Deere four-wheel drive tractor and go down the road oh, with yeah. a plow. Oh, yeah. And that stuck. 
Oh. And that stuck with me and that, that just, it left an impression. Well, the tractor I remember with the great big huge tires and four wheel drive was the 8850. Mm -hmm. And that tractor was always unique because it had been named. Mm -hmm. Okay, and people around the neighborhood knew it by its name too, which I always thought was fascinating. Really? That there's a tractor that, well, especially like for me and yeah. and Paul and oh, you yeah. know our crew over there, our yeah. families all knew the name of that tractor, and so it had great big tires. It left an impression. I'm building up this garden tractor, and I'm putting big tires on it, and I'm trying to make it unique. <laughs> and I thought maybe I could pay homage to Donald and that tractor, and call it. <laughs> The same as that tractor. Bruno. <laughs> Bruno. Yeah. So I had a tractor, garden tractor named Brutus. Yeah. Because it was a muscular brute. Uh -huh. And I had a tractor named Bill. And I named it Bill because I got it for one $100 bill. <laughs> okay. So here's my stretch. Brutus is the brew. And then a bill, one bill is Uno. <laughs> brew and Uno is Bruno. Oh, good deal. <laughs> See? So that works perfect. Yeah, it does. Well, thank you so much, Ruth. Oh, I really welcome, appreciate Neil. it. All right, that's Bruno. <laughs>